what we have to admit they want emit they want they want to capture to offset uh, but this is again this is dominated by about one seventh of the world so one seventh of the world is marching down this path the other six seventh really isn't <laughs> Uh, they're trying to develop in a normal fashion and, and use uh, hydrocarbon fuels. But uh, this net zero thing is going to come crashing down. It's going to take a couple decades, uh, but there are many, many reasons that point to that. And uh, so that, that would be uh, what we need to discuss. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, with little more than a month to go, figured we'd uh, bring you a little skepticism. You know, we are professional skeptics on Financial Survival Network, especially when it comes to the government trying to do something that many of you obviously don't want, or when it comes to the government's policies on energy, we're especially skeptics there. And person you're about to hear from, author of four books, a former engineer, entrepreneur, business owner, and uh, this book just came out August 1st called Green Breakdown, The Coming Renewable Energy Failure. I'm not sure about the title. I think it's already here, but uh, maybe the coming uh, realization of the coming uh, of the current energy, renewable energy failure. His name is Steve Gorham. Steve, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, if you got a question for Steve or myself, shoot me an email, hate mail, whatever. You know, I realize you guys Many of you out there don't like to hear shade thrown upon your pet climate cause. But Steve, uh, hey, the failure is already here. It's just that we're not going to know it for two or three years, right? Well, Kerry, I don't think it has quite failed yet. It's been great to join you. Uh, the world is spending uh, about just about a trillion dollars on renewables to try and stop the planet from warming. We have uh, more than 180 heads of state that say they believe that humans are causing dangerous global warming. We have all of our major universities, our uh, leading uh, Fortune 500 companies, the news media, uh, so uh, also signing up to the theory of the United Nations, our scientific organizations. So the world is still more, is, is very much marching down this path, and the goal is to be what they call net zero by 2050, uh, basically zero carbon dioxide emissions from all of our processes. And what we what we have to admit they want to emit, they want they want to capture to offset. Uh, but this is again, this is dominated by about one seventh of the world. So one seventh of the world is marching down this path. The other six seventh really isn't. <laughs> Uh, they're trying to develop in a normal fashion and, and use uh, hydrocarbon fuels. But uh, this net zero thing is going to come crashing down. It's going to take a couple decades, uh, but there are many, many reasons that point to that. And uh, so that, that would be uh, what we need to discuss. Look, the reason why I say it's a failure already is uh, thus far, uh, best guesstimate, we have spent $5 trillion on so-called renewables, renewable yeah. energy. And... Uh, for our efforts, uh, 4% of the global energy is now produced by renewables. So it's failed yes. already, dollar for dollar. You know, when you talk sustainable energy, the most sustainable form of energy that has ever been uh, created besides nuclear power is petroleum, right? Petroleum-based energy, hydrocarbons, natural gas. What's more sustainable than that? It, it fed this uh, great... A uh, leap forward of technology, of economics, of civilization, lifting many of you out of poverty. Isn't that the definition of sustainability? Yeah, if you plot uh, global energy use and, or global hydrocarbon energy use and gross to the national product, you'll find they're very highly correlated. Matter of fact, if you plot carbon dioxide emissions with uh, 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 gross uh, domestic product for the world. Those are very highly correlated. Cor cor That's probably the best indicator of human prosperity that we have, if you want to take a metric. Mm -hmm. But now, as we say, we have we have a, uh, most of the the wealthy world that is actively trying to suppress car suppress uh, the use of hydrocarbons, and um, 
Uh, so we're, we are marching down this road. The thing is that we are going to have a breakdown and we're going to have uh, uh, about three or four main things on the breakdown. Uh, the first is we're going to have much higher electricity prices and much higher energy prices. The second is we're going to have blackouts in our electricity system because we're putting in intermittent uh, wind and solar for always on uh, coal and natural gas and uh, nuclear power. So we're going to have blackouts that are coming along. We've seen some already. We're going to have loss of freedom because uh, we have a number of governments, including our own U.S. government, telling us that uh, we must buy an electric car. Uh, we must uh, get rid of our gas stove. Uh, we must take all of our power plants and uh, convert them to a carbon capture or, or wind or solar. And then the fourth thing is we're going to have transnational energy shocks. And we've seen the first of those, and these are based on green energy. We've seen the first of those in Europe over the last two years. Uh, the price of uh, uh, natural gas still remains twice as high as it was two years ago, and the price of electricity is three or four times as high. And uh, Europe has taken a step function down in their standard of living. So uh, the more we push intermittent renewables, the more we're going to see these these four effects. All right. So uh, is there a climate crisis that needs all this? Well, that's that's another thing. Yeah, the <laughs> the foundation of all this is is really uh, uh, on a faulty basis. Uh, the idea that humans are causing dangerous climate change uh, by emitting a trace gas into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, uh, the theory is plausible. There's a greenhouse effect, and by putting CO2 in the atmosphere, we're warming up uh, the atmosphere. The problem is that human emissions are a tiny part of, of all the overall greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and the uh, both the greenhouse effect and global warming is dominated by natural factors, not man-made emissions. So it's unlikely with, with all these efforts to transition, we're going to be able to produce a measurable effect on global temperatures. Okay. So we're, it, it's, all based, it's all based on a faulty, faulty premise. Uh, uh, and I, I actually call it the, uh, the greatest modern superstition in history. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, it, but it, you know, the idea that if you can say that... Uh, that you believe if we change light bulbs, we can save polar bears, and if we all drive electric cars, we can stop the oceans from rising, and if we build wind turbines, we can make the storms less severe and less frequent. That's the closest definition to uh, to superstition that I can think of. All right, so well, let's talk about that. We're now experiencing the so-called hottest summer on record, and yeah. the temperature of the oceans, you know, off the coast of Florida, it was like 100 degrees, like hottest ever. But then uh, the media forgot to tell us that there was a major undersea volcano, I think in the Pacific someplace, that basically heated up the oceans. And yet, even with the oceans being so hot, uh, you know, it's the middle of hurricane season in Florida. We haven't seen any yet. Yeah, that's right. It's it, uh, We may have a zero hurricane landfall this year, which does happen every once in a while. 12 years. Yeah, so, 12 years. So you're right. Went without, you know, 12 years. Yeah. The headlines in July were that we had the hottest month in 100,000 years, which was complete nonsense. Uh, I can show a mountain of evidence. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sites, including my own, stevegorham.com. But uh, there's much, much evidence that we had warmer uh, temperatures on the Earth about 1,000 years ago during the medieval warm period when the Vikings settled southwest West Greenland which at the time had trees uh, 20 feet high. Now there are no trees. There's nothing but scrub grasses. 2,000 years ago when the, when the Romans uh, conquered the Mediterranean in, in those short skirts. Mm -hmm. And then four and 8,000 years ago, we've had multi-century long periods in the past 10,000 years that have been warmer uh, to, than today. Today's climate is not historically warm. Uh, in one piece of evidence, in an ocean of evidence, uh, there's a glacier in Switzerland called the Rhone Glacier. I don't know if you've ever seen it. The Rhone River runs out of it. Heard of it, yes. It's got, it's kind of wall to wall between the mountains. Well, that has been uh, receding for uh, more than a century, but every time it recedes, they find things like wagon wheels under it, and they find horse bridles, and they find wood that's four thousand years old. And uh, all of this evidence that it was warmer in the past than it is today, naturally, long before we had SUVs or power plants. And there are just many, many uh, uh, instances of that. Another one, as a matter of fact, the state high temperature records. 
if you and there's a site uh, that the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA keeps called the Street the State Extremes site, and if you go to that, you find that um, 23 of the state high temperature records were set in the 1930s. 23 out of 50, and uh, if in uh, 36, 70 percent of them were set before 1970. Wow. So just, there's just much, much evidence that we've had naturally warm periods in the past. It's about 100 degrees there today in Chicago, which is which is very warm. But our state high our temperature record was in, in Illinois was in 1954. That was 118 Fahrenheit. <laughs> and I've never seen anything like any anywhere close to that in, in my lifetime of right. of uh, 70 years or so. So uh, a lot of this press is just wrong. But Steve, what about the oceans? They're... They're getting higher, and uh, they're going to, you know, Florida is just going to basically be overwhelmed with all the water coming in, and it'll cease to exist. Uh, isn't that true? Yeah, you're right. Well, ocean ocean rise is the the most hazardous forecast of, of climatism, as I'll call it. And by the way, that was in the title of my first two books, and now um, uh, uh, Mr. Trump and Mr. Ramaswamy are using the term climatism, so it's nice to see to, to describe the ideology. But yeah, uh, the former Vice President Al Gore, Dr. James Hansen of NASA, predicted a a twenty foot sea level rise by the year twenty one hundred. Yeah. And sometimes when I present, I show a map which shows that uh, much of Florida would be flooded if we had a twenty foot rise. We had we have a big red area around the coast. So what people need to know about sea level rise is oceans. First off, oceans have been rising since the last ice age, the last twenty thousand years. Uh, NASA, you can go to the site with NASA, and they'll show a chart that shows they've gone up one hundred and twenty meters or three hundred and ninety feet in the last twenty thousand years. That's how much oceans have gone on going up. No scientist can, no climate scientist can tell you when natural sea level rise stopped and man-made sea level rise began. But our best tide gauges today show that the oceans are rising at about seven or eight inches per century, not the 20 feet per century that some are, are projecting. So these are all based on computer model projections and not on historical data. Well, models are never wrong, right? Well, the climate models appear to be wrong. Um, there are many, 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 many instances. Well, for example, uh, in 1980, in 1990, in the first in the IPCC's first assessment report, the IPCC is is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change of the United Nations. Oh, they predicted that, that. Temp- we could believe the United predicted- Nations, right? <laughs> they predicted that temperatures would would be rising three tenths of a degree Celsius per decade, uh, with a high half of half a degree per Celsius and a low of two tenths. So, but but thirty years later now, we can take a look at the data, and and our temperatures are well below their low average and what the models predicted. So uh, we're seeing a very gentle rise, uh, but but uh, the computer models it's clear that they're wrong. They're wrong, huh? Okay. So what about this climate gate thing? I'm sure you've uh, delved into that a lot. It just got hushed yeah, by the climate media, gate. like it <laughs> didn't ever even happen. Well, I talked about that in my first book, in my first two books. Uh, climatism and the bad, bad, mad world of climatism. The so what happened was that a hacker got into um, the climate research unit in England at the um, uh, University of East Anglia and released about a thousand emails uh, talking about conversations between the scientists. And there were all sorts of things in there uh, talking about uh, suppressing the the scientific journals, about trying to change the the uh, the rise and the fall of temperature curves, talking about, well, if we just adjust this up here and we adjust this down here, and we have to get rid of the medieval warm period, which you remember I mentioned this right. was one of the warm periods in the past. So, so you know, it is it is strange, and I do believe that, that the climate scientists um, are sincere, and they think that there is a problem, that the world is warming. And, but but then they say, then it appears that they're, they're, uh, their position is that, well, we have to, you know, the... the the cause is so important, the danger is so great that we have to be able to, uh, we, we can even falsify data to allow us to present the right image. And that's exactly what they did. As a matter of fact, uh, former Vice President Gore has talked about that. He said, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, uh, you know, uh, adjustment of the data or or uh, a little bit of exaggeration is okay. And a number of other scientists have said the same thing. 
So it, it makes uh, it makes for we've also had the uh, NOAA and and NASA have adjusted their temperature curves uh, decades after the temp- the temperature uh, the temperature thermometer measurements were taken. So uh, they put in all these adjustments in, in in addition to the original temperature uh, readings from the thermometers. And so it's very tough to to uh, to uh, believe a lot of the data that you see. I do believe we have had a little bit of warming, uh, very small, about one degree Celsius since 1880 in the last 140 years. But that is uh, dominated by natural factors, not man-made emissions. Right. So that explains the heat wave, that one degree rise uh, that we're having this summer. That's it. Okay. <laughs> well, this summer, yeah, we've got, well, it gets hot in the summer, and that's, that's what happens. And again, uh, for most of the states... Um, I think you're in Florida. The uh, the record temperature in Florida was uh, 112. Let's see, that was set back in 1931. I don't have the location, but I could look that up. We've not had see, that anything in, like that since. That was in Monticello or, or wherever that is. But uh, yeah, so that is is the situation. Nevertheless, the press is always talking about how everything is terribly hot and that humans are causing it and that uh, the planet's overheating it. It is is it sells papers, you know. It sells news media, but uh, people should awesome. really uh, not believe it. All right. Well, uh, hey, we're we're skeptics about everything and anything the government says or try to get to tries to get us to do. You should be too. Uh, tell us the book. Where do we find it? I assume Amazon and wherever fine books used to be sold. Yes, Screen Breakdown is at Amazon. Um, it's a color paperback, 256 pages. Uh, it'll give people, uh, if you have a stove, if you have a car, if you have uh, you use electricity, you really need to read this book and see what's going on. Uh, there are ebooks available as well on uh, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, and Barnes and Noble. Or they can get one from my website. I'll send them a signed copy if they want to order one. Steve Gorham, G O R E H A M dot com. All right. And I'm hoarding gas stoves. Uh, I've got a room where I've got <laughs> six of them now because I just don't trust them and I don't like cooking with electric. Uh, gas is far superior. There's no health issues for gas stoves. That's just total nonsense. Hey, Steve, yeah. appreciate your coming right. on and go get. Thank Steve's, you, Gary. Yeah, go get Steve's book. Uh, if you got any questions for Steve, myself, KL at KerryLutz.com. Make sure when you go to the site, FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, you sign up for your free newsletter. Steve, a pleasure. Be well. Good luck on the book. Thanks, uh, Carrie. Until the next time. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.